This right here is the Xtool F1, and I just got it a few weeks ago, and I've been learning how to use it. It's one of the most portable laser engravers on the market. It's easily carried, and as you can see, it's about the size of a large shoebox. And aside from the huge amount of materials that you can use the F1 to engrave, you can also take the removable base plate out and use it to engrave almost anything that it can sit on. The real reason why it's so compact is because it's what's known as a Galvo laser. Prior to getting the F1, all my experience has been with open gantry style lasers like this one. They work by physically moving the laser around on an XY axis. This style can be very useful if what you're trying to engrave is really big, but the disadvantage is that they are very slow. So how a Galvo laser differs, I'll try to demonstrate in the simplest fashion I can. Here is a laser pointer. A Galvo laser doesn't move the laser around. It moves a mirror or a series of mirrors around, like this. The laser stays in one spot and the mirror vibrates around to put the laser beam exactly where the computer wants it to go. I'm sure the mechanics are much more complicated, but that's the basic concept. Anyway, looking at the back of the machine, you can see the on-off switch and this little key that is basically like a USB dongle that works as a lockout. Like most engravers, there's a big red emergency on-off stop button and a nice big laser safety shield. Raising or lowering the beam as well as focusing can be done through the use of this multifunction switch on the side. It's very simple and easy to figure out. All you need to do to focus the laser is move the head up or down until the red and blue dots come together. This can also be done through an autofocus feature in the software. And one of the coolest things about a Galvo laser is it's super easy to do framing. There'll be more on this later. Connecting the F1 to a computer is dead simple. First, I connected the F1 to my laptop using the supplied USB cable. Next, I made sure both machines were on. The F1 uses Xtool's Creative Space software, and I had already downloaded this for free from their website. I'll give you a warning that this software, while pretty nice and easy to use, is kind of a memory hog, so if you have a really old computer like my old shop laptop, you may need to replace it to be able to run this. That's what I had to do anyway. After opening up the software, I clicked New Project, and because this is literally the first time I've connected the F1 to this laptop, I needed to install the drivers. The prompt was already there, and it went quick and easy. Then I clicked on the Please Connect a Device button at the top, and the F1 popped up in the list. At this point, I pretty much just followed all the prompts, but I will bring to your attention that up in the upper right-hand corner, a little thing popped up that said, Click to go to laser safety training. More on that in a sec, but that's it. The laser's connected. Regarding that laser safety training prompt, it's a 13-minute long video that shows the viewer all the different hazards that are associated with using a laser engraving machine. If you've been using these types of tools for a while, you'll probably be familiar with all the information in the video, but if you're a beginner, it's definitely worth watching. And as a heads up, the software will keep prompting you to watch it until you do. And you definitely can't fault Xtool for trying to be responsible. And I'm about to get into some basic software stuff in the use of the F1, but if you need help, the Xtool website has tons of great videos and tutorials, and it will go into much more detail than what I'm going to be able to do in this video. I found the software very intuitive and easy to figure out, especially as compared to Lightburn. The software really supports the ability to be able to actually create things to engrave inside of it rather than just import them, which is usually how I use Lightburn. Aside from some of the basic things like importing images, text, and drawing circles and boxes, there's a huge library of shapes. A lot of it is very clip-arty, but it seems like it would be very useful for the more craft-minded user. Now, I'm still learning how to use this machine, so I really haven't gotten too far into any of that. There is also an AI image generator, and I really have not played around a whole lot with this, because to be honest, I'm still not too sure how I feel about AI-generated art. And there's also a few built-in applications that I'll go over quickly. Most of these require that you have some sort of object already on the canvas, so I'm going to quickly add one so you can see what they do. So we're going to use this little pig here. You can use the grid array application to create multiple copies in rows and columns. And this here is kind of a poor example because it was literally the first time I tried to do it, but you can use the circular array to create the same sort of thing except around a central point. And this is also where you find your materials test, which you need some sort of object to use as your test. Now, a small square would have probably been the best thing, but in this case, I made a materials test out of pig heads. And lastly, there's a very neat code generator that you can use to create either a QR or a barcode. Setting engraving parameters for individual objects is this easy. Select the object, then click on the Easy Set Panel button. 
I haven't mentioned it yet, but this machine has two lasers in it, both a 10 watt blue light and a 2 watt IR. This gives great flexibility in the kinds of materials that can be engraved or marked. Anyway, here's where you can change things like power and speed, number of passes, lines per centimeter, and the engraving mode. Just to be aware, the number of passes per operation maxes out at 10. So you can set individual parameters for each object on the canvas just like you can with different layers in Lightburn. And if you double click on an object, you can do individual edits to all the different nodes inside the SVG. So I'm going to give this owl a weird head because why not? Anyway, enough about the software, let's see the F1 in use. So I'm going to start by importing an image. This is just a basic logo. It's pretty big, so I'm going to scale it down to fit onto the canvas. Then I'm going to place my engraving material, in this case a piece of quarter inch plywood. I use the multifunction knob to set the laser focus by making sure that the blue and red lasers are crossing each other. Next, I clicked on the framing button so I could see where the image would be engraved. Compared to the diode lasers I've used, this is really nice. Then I turned framing off so I could proceed with the engraving. I used the material preset library for my settings on this one. I selected 6mm bass plywood, which was pretty close to what I'm actually engraving on. Then I click process, which brings you to this screen. Here you can watch a simulation of the engraving path, but I don't really care about that, so I'm going to go ahead and click start. This sends the file to the machine, then I press the multifunction button in and it starts the engraving. For the purpose of this video, I'm letting it run with the safety shield up just so you can see what it looks like. I was wearing laser safety goggles while this was going on. While that runs, let's talk about smoke. Depending on the type of material being used, lots of smoke or fumes can be produced. When the protective shield is down on the F1, that little exhaust fan does a great job of capturing all the particulate and fumes that are coming off of whatever's being engraved, and it comes with this nice little hose that you can run on a window. But Xtool also sent me a desktop air purifier, which I'll show you right now. Say that you have to use the F1 somewhere where there isn't any kind of readily available window, you can run the exhaust hose into this machine and it will clean the air for you. Inside is a pretty robust and replaceable filter. Ideally, you would then want to run the exhaust hose from the filter out the window, but if you didn't have anything, this is better than nothing, and it definitely helps with cutting down on the smoke and smells. When doing the engraving on the plywood, I could barely smell anything with this in use. It connects to the F1 via USB cable, and it runs in two modes. One will automatically come on whenever the machine, the F1 that is, is running, and the other mode is continuous where you can manually turn it on or off. All this kit makes for a very clean setup. This entire burn took about two and a half minutes, maybe a little bit more, and I did cut it a little bit short here in the video, but it was running at real time speed. But here's a question, how fast was this compared to a traditional gantry style diode laser? I reran the exact same test, only this time I did it with a stopwatch. I'll spare you having to watch the entire thing again, but like I said, it took about two and a half minutes. I ran the same graphic at the same size against an Atom Stack A30 Pro. The blue diode laser in this machine is about three times as powerful as that in the F1. I did some off-camera testing to figure out exactly what the best settings would be to have the same sort of burn achieved. Now, I reviewed this machine about a year ago and I still really like it, so I'm not doing this as a way to say that this is a bad machine. It's not. But you can see how a gantry style diode is just never going to keep up with a Galbo laser for something like a small engraving. This ended up taking the atom stack over 9 minutes to do the exact same thing. To my eye, at least, these look pretty much exactly the same, but the Xtool F1 did do it 7 minutes faster. But a head-to-head -head engraving competition may not be the kind of speed somebody's worried about. Just to get an idea of how long it would take to do a full start-to-finish aluminum anodized business card, I ran this test. Starting cold from opening up a new canvas in the software, I created a very basic business card with a QR code going to my YouTube. Now this is when I still didn't really know very much about using the software, but you can see I can still fumble through it pretty quick. Here we are at about three minutes and I'm already getting pretty close to doing framing. And speaking of framing, this is one of the things I love the most about this machine is the way you can frame with the Galvo laser it makes it so precise. I used that little removable positioning bracket to make sure that the business card would stay squared to the laser. I was able to do micro adjustments through the software to get the image exactly where I wanted it to go. And in just over six and a half minutes, I was already at the point of pressing start on the laser. 
Now, because this is an anodized business card, I'm using the IR laser, and it's even faster than the diode. From inception to execution, this was done in under eight minutes. For cutting, you use this little plate that the F1 comes with. It's similar to honeycomb cutting surfaces on larger lasers, and it allows all the smoke and exhaust gases to come out of the bottom of the cut. Using the cutting attachment will change the laser focus, so you need to raise the laser up until the beams touch again. I'm going to cut this simple little star, so in the software I select the star and then I set the processing type to cut. Back in the processing tab, I set the material to 6mm basswood again, which is still the closest to the type of plywood I'm using. But as it turns out, the materials library is not intended for cutting, so I had to manually change the settings. So because I'm trying to cut wood, I'm going to use the blue diode laser, and I picked settings that I thought might work. This was a first test, so I really wasn't sure. With everything already set for the machine, I went ahead and clicked process and then start. Once the F1 was ready, I pressed the multifunction button and the cut started. This is only a 10 watt laser, so I guess I wasn't really surprised that it didn't cut all the way through with those settings. I went back to the software and I maxed out the power while completely bottoming out the speed. While the F1 can cut, I wouldn't say that cutting is really this machine's forte. The F1 has a remarkably great ability to be able to mark and engrave all sorts of different materials, but due to the low power of a 10 watt laser as well as the small cutting surface area, I don't know that I would really use this for cutting all that often. And perhaps I just need more practice with it, but I found the cut kerf was big enough to drive a bus through. But then, as I was editing this, I realized maybe I completely missed the point on what this machine was designed to be able to cut. I mean, just because the F1 can cut quarter inch thick plywood doesn't mean that I should do that. And besides, I've got bigger and larger diode lasers to be able to do that when I need to anyway. So I thought, how would it do with a piece of paper? So this is a piece of thin poster board, and it took me a couple tries to find the right settings, but I found that I could get a very intricate and detailed cut using the laser, and it only took about five minutes. This was just a random pattern that I pulled out of the library, but I think I could do something much more detailed than even this. I could see this being really useful for making small stencils or more crafting type things. Now, you may notice I do have some small pieces of tape holding the paper in place because the exhaust fan was enough that it was fluttering around and I didn't want it to move in the middle of the cut. So there you have it. I think that this is actually really capable of doing cutting as long as you're using materials that are well within the capability of the machine, and that makes a lot of sense, true for any laser. My example of detail started out as a brass multipass test. This was before I realized that the software capped out at a maximum of 10 passes per item on a canvas. Incidentally, I think you could add extra layers to the engraving and then have more passes on those layers, but that's a level in the software that I'm not going to get into right now because I'm still learning it. Anyway, for some reason I decided to add multiple passes on an image of a penguin drinking a beer. This whole thing took about 27 minutes to run, and what I learned is that between one pass or 10 passes, the IR laser doesn't make an appreciable difference, though the 10 passes is a bit darker. But my impulsive move to use the picture of the penguin drinking a beer in this test revealed some incredible detail. I reran that test on some art scratch paper the F1 came with, and again, the detail was excellent. I figured I had better try with at least one other picture, so I randomly downloaded this, and I was pretty happy with how it came out. And this was with no editing or processing. I ran the materials test on a piece of stainless steel I had to see if it would produce colors like other lasers do, and the answer was yes. I suspect that a wider range of settings would have also produced a wider range of color. So different materials require different types of laser wavelengths to be able to mark or etch, and luckily, since this one has two different lasers inside of it, it's got pretty good flexibility for types of materials that can be engraved. So just to be clear, this in a single pass isn't really going to remove enough material from the aluminum to make it a true engraving, but it is a very good marking, and it's fast. I also tried it on a piece of hot rolled steel that I had, and this one was not cleaned off, so I suspect it was mainly removing the mill scale, but it still worked pretty good. I also tried some cold rolled steel that had been cleaned, and one pass was enough to mark, but not enough to mark well, but ten passes worked great. A slate coaster was no problem. Neither was a piece of real leather, though this smelled horrible while it engraved, even through the air cleaner. Ten passes on cast iron did a great job on this hand plane. 
and I was able to mark this socket using the IR laser at 100% power and minimum speed. It came out great. If I had a job where I had to mark all my tools, I would definitely use the F1 for everything. It also did great on cardboard with no issues with scorching or burning. And here's a piece of glossy black acrylic that I did originally with the protective coating still on. And I did a few more aluminum business cards for good measure. And lastly, I did a piece of hastily painted canvas. This time I inverted the image so it actually came out the way it was supposed to. So the F1 is very small and fairly light, but to operate it you do obviously need a power source. And it can even be connected to a smartphone or tablet so a computer isn't even necessary. So I figured to really see how flexible and portable the F1 is, let's see how it would work if you had to engrave a wall. As it turns out, the machine would work just fine. So, follow-up question, what if you had to engrave the ceiling? So provided you figured out a way to hold the machine securely, it would do just fine. So overall, I have to say I really like this machine and I'm glad that I got it. I'm really looking forward to learning more about the F1 and the software to unlock the machine's full potential. It's as easy as filling out a form and I'll put the link to that in the description. And if you're interested in getting an F1 and you have an older X-Tool machine that you no longer want, you can now trade in your laser or vinyl cutter for a new X-Tool machine and save up to $500. And if you actually made it this far, as always, thanks for watching.